Alaska is a mystery, no doubt about this. With its vast, open lands, unbridled wildlife, and picturesque scenery, there is so much that we still don't know about America's last frontier. But no description of strange happenings in the heart of the last frontier would be complete without reports of an anomaly structure emitting unexplained energy buried deep underground in the Alaskan wilderness, somewhere between Nome and Matt McKinley. And according to many sources, the U.S. government then sealed off the area and silenced all those involved. However, despite facing the risk of being court-martialed for treason, veteran intelligence officer Douglas Muckler bravely spoke out, unveiling the existence of a colossal pyramid constructed entirely of black granite in the heart of Alaska that was not shown on any map or satellite imagery. What secrets are kept within this mysterious structure? Join us as we dig deep into the massive pyramid from the corners of Alaska that has got the U.S. government panicking. Alaska's history is riddled with unsolved mysteries, adding to its reputation as a hub of intrigue. So, whether it's the allure of the unknown, the thrill of discovery, or the fear of the unexplained, Alaska becomes a hotbed of mystery, beckoning those brave enough to venture into its enigmatic depths. As a result, every year in Denali National Park and Preserve, formerly known as Mount McKinley National Park, a national park and preserve located in interior Alaska, the National Park Service, or NPS, responds to hundreds of cases just like this. A hiker gets lost, is quickly reported, and is found within 24 hours. Case closed. But very rarely, the search comes up empty-handed. A backpacker in Sequoia Kings Canyon takes a detour and never returns. A tourist mysteriously walks away from his car and disappears into the Yosemite wilderness. Despite helicopters, scent dogs, and search teams, sometimes people seem to simply vanish. That's when the Investigative Services Branch, ISB, or FBI of the National Park Service, steps in. The special agents of the ISB investigate cold cases, the missing persons and unsolved crimes that slip through the cracks of normal NPS law enforcement. Though it sounds romantic, or like a bad TV show, detectives in flat hats dusting for fingerprints around Old Faithful, it's not an easy job. The abundant wildlife and bad weather of many national parks wreaks havoc on physical evidence. Even after a long search, all the ISB may have to go on is a few fragments of a torn tent, some hiker's hazy eyewitness report, or in one of their recent cases, the story of one man's search for a giant alien pyramid buried deep in the Alaskan wilderness. On May 27, 2020, 41-year-old Nathan Campbell hired a charter plane out of Talkeetna to fly him to a small lake in the northwest corner of Denali National Park. Along with some basic camping gear, Campbell brought a hefty cache of food, stored in plastic tubs, and a two-way satellite communicator to check in with his wife and kids. He planned to spend the next four months alone smack dab in the center of interior Alaska. But Campbell wasn't there for fun. He was on a mission. On the long flight from Talkeetna to Cary Lake, while the vast green carpet of the boreal forest floated beneath them, the usually shy Campbell told his pilot, Jason Sturgis, how he planned to spend his summer. Campbell had come to Cary Lake to search for something that, until now, only existed in the darkest, least updated corners of the internet. The Black Pyramid, a massive underground structure rumored to be four times the size of the famous Cheops in Egypt and thousands, if not millions of years old. Conspiracy theorists claim the structure is so powerful, its importance to national security so tantamount, that all traces of the pyramid and the military base believed to protect it have been wiped from satellite imagery. Although bush pilots, trappers, and natives had traveled the area around Cary Lake for generations, a quick search through the Fairbanks Daily News minor archives shows few references to a giant alien pyramid or top-secret base in central Alaska. But then again, until Nathan Campbell showed up, no one had been really looking for it, and his reasons for starting his search deep in the Alaskan wilderness, if you follow the nebulous logic of conspiracy theory, make perfect sense. 
First, the Black Pyramid fits neatly into the pantheon of paranoid, inducing military installations in Alaska. The most infamous of these is the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, located just outside of Fairbanks. Depending on who you ask, HARP is a high frequency transmitter used to remotely set off earthquakes, to topple Venezuelan dictators, control the world's climate and undermine the fossil fuel industry, or help scientists study the ionosphere. Second, the supposed location of the Black Pyramid has long been recognized as an area of geostrategic importance. In the 1930s, General Billy Mitchell, the so-called father of the U.S. Air Force, saw that Lake Minchumina, about 40 miles north of where Campbell landed at Cary Lake, was equidistant to the major urban industrial centers of the Northern Hemisphere. That meant, with the same tank of fuel, a B-52 taking off from the shores of Lake Minchumina could strike Tokyo, Beijing, Moscow, Paris, or even New York. In modern warfare, General Mitchell had shown that the middle of nowhere could become the center of everything. Then, in the early 90s, came the real evidence for the Black Pyramid. Scientists studying shock waves from a 1992 Chinese underground nuclear test recorded a grainy, pyramid-shaped spot of interference 700 below the surface of interior Alaska. But its age, origin, and function are still unknown. The existence of the Black Pyramid was not confirmed until July 26, 2012, when veteran journalist and UFO specialist Linda Moulton Howe reported its discovery on the Coast to Coast AM radio show, despite claims of its ancient origins. Linda Moulton Howe conducted a study in which she reported that the Alaska Triangle is a zone where ships, planes, and people have disappeared. She estimated that 18,000 individuals had gone missing in that area since 1988. On the evening of that day, Linda Moulton Howe aired a pre-recorded conversation with Doug Mutchler, a retired U.S. Army counterintelligence agent, who described the events leading to the uncovering of the pyramid and revealed the connection between the location and the U.S. military. Mutchler was transferred from Alaska to Fort Meade, home of the National Security Agency, where he confirmed the pyramid story using classified information. He stated, I searched for information on archaeological sites or underground facilities in Alaska. But I didn't mention pyramids specifically. I was told that any information about it could be in X, Y, or Z containers, he said. So I went over there and looked around. I didn't find anything about pyramids, but I did come across some information about Alaska from two different vaults. I had just sat down when two people approached me and said, you don't need to know this stuff. Mutchler asserts that a local NBC affiliate aired a report about the discovery of the building about six months after the explosion, but when he attempted to reach out to the station for a copy of the report, they denied it had been broadcasted and stated that they did not have a copy to provide. However, things took an unexpected turn the day after Linda Moulton Howe's interview with Mutchler. The son of a former Western electric engineer contacted her to confirm Mutchler's claims and provide additional information. The new source informed Howe that between 1959 and 1961, his father had worked on a powerful electrical system emanating from a massive underground pyramid of unknown origin in Alaska. According to the new witnesses' accounts, after the war, his father studied electrical engineering and physics in college. He was then selected by the military to be part of a team of experts to study and work in an underground structure in Alaska called the Black Pyramid, as he described it. He repeatedly emphasized how highly the government valued this project and the measures they took to keep it concealed. He had thought it was a military base, but it was actually a research project focused on energy distribution. He went on to become a primary information provider for AT&T, which was a precursor to today's web and cell phone technologies. In his later years, he would often complain about his electricity bill, saying it could be free if people only knew the truth. That means he knew much more than we thought, but sadly, we'll never know it.
As he mentioned, it was all confidential information. There may not be any available records. If the pyramid discovered in 1992 is true, the government may have known about it well before then and taken great efforts to keep it hidden. Linda Moulton Howe states that an ancient pyramid can be found approximately 80 kilometers southwest of Mount McKinley. It is believed to have been constructed by a highly advanced civilization that is currently unknown to us. Adding to the mystique of the Alaska Black Pyramid are the various legends and myths that surround it. Local indigenous tribes have passed down tales of the pyramid for generations, often imbuing it with supernatural significance. Some believe that the structure holds mystical powers or serves as a portal to other dimensions. Others warn of ancient curses that befall those who dare to disturb its slumber. Despite numerous expeditions and investigations, the secrets of the Alaska Black Pyramid remain elusive. Conspiracy theorists and amateur sleuths scour satellite imagery and analyze obscure texts in search of clues that might unlock the pyramid's mysterious origin. But the allure of the Alaska Black Pyramid extends beyond its enigmatic origins. Pyramids have fascinated humanity for millennia, not just because of their architectural grandeur, but also due to the enigmatic aura surrounding their alleged mystical powers. One of the most intriguing theories about pyramids involves their purported ability to harness and manipulate electromagnetic energy. The concept stems from the geometric properties of pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza, which has a precise and mathematically significant design. It's believed that the shape of the pyramid, with its sloping sides meeting at a point, creates a natural geometric resonator. This resonator is said to amplify and focus electromagnetic energy, much like an antenna or a lens concentrates light. Proponents of this theory suggest that ancient civilizations, with their advanced understanding of geometry and natural energies, intentionally constructed pyramids as energy-gathering structures. They believe that pyramids were strategically placed at specific locations on the Earth's energetic grid to tap into and channel the planet's natural electromagnetic fields. Furthermore, some researchers claim that the internal structure of pyramids, particularly the chambers and passageways within, may have been designed to enhance the concentration and flow of electromagnetic energy. Certain measurements and proportions found within the Great Pyramid, such as the King's Chamber and its relationship to the Earth's dimensions, are often cited as evidence of this deliberate design. Moreover, anecdotal accounts and experimental studies have suggested that pyramids possess unique properties that affect electromagnetic fields. For instance, Individuals have reported experiencing unusual sensations or heightened states of consciousness when inside or near pyramid structures. Some experiments have shown that placing objects inside a pyramid-shaped enclosure can have effects such as preserving food, sharpening blades, or even promoting healing. The final, most serious claim to the proposition of pyramid power is Ukrainian physicist Dr. Volodymyr Krasnoholovets. Dr. Krasnoholovets was a theoretical physicist and senior scientist for over 20 years at the Institute of Physics in Ukraine. This institute was the premier military research institution of the former Soviet Union, and Dr. Krasnoholovets helped develop instrumentation and new research technology. Dr. Krasnoholovets' specialty is condensed matter physics. However, the foundations of physics are also in the area of his interests. In this line of research, combining knowledge of condensed matter with the main regulations of quantum physics, he has constructed submicroscopic quantum mechanics developed in the real space. The theory constructed considers the real space as a tessellation of primordial cells, or balls, or superparticles, which are elementary blocks of nature. Whether one feels the need to consider Dr. Krasnoholovets a genius or a mad scientist, his findings coincide with ancient theological traditions and claims of the pyramids within the cultures from which they were constructed, as well as the consistent stream of research into pyramid power, or more aptly, 
pyramid physics. His theories also speak loudly for the possibility that the Dark Pyramid could have been picked up by the White Alice communication systems in Alaska, and that as lore would have it, the pyramid itself conducts and transmits enough electromagnetic energy to theoretically power the entire country of Canada, or even more depending on who one asks. Could it be that pyramids were constructed by ancient man in order to conduct more electromagnetic energy on a global scale, perhaps even in order to benefit their personal, cognitive, and spiritual capabilities? It sounds far-fetched, but it also sounds far-fetched to have hundreds of pyramids located all across the ancient Earth. If they are conducting this electromagnetic energy, what connection does that have with human consciousness? If it has a connection to human consciousness, then why is there public secrecy? What could their use be in today's society? In the end, one must focus on the issues at hand and not let wonder and speculation pull the attention from what is truly important. Regardless, this information poses many questions that demand to be asked. How could there be similar ancient pyramids all across the globe from separate and isolated cultures? Why would those that have been discovered outside of Egypt and Alaska not been widely recognized? There seems to be something there, and it undoubtedly involves the military dating back to the Cold War. In this politically driven society, so full of corruption and secrecy, one must ask themselves if they believe their government is capable of worldwide deception, capable of creating an entire backstory to cover a massive truth dating back to the beginning of man. Secret bases, government cover-ups, global warfare, ancient aliens and pyramid power, everything came together to create the story of the Black Pyramid, stirring the imaginations of those who dare to venture into its remote regions. The story that Campbell, if he followed any of the internet lore, surely planned his summer vacation around. Sadly, somewhere out there, he got himself into trouble. On October 1st, 2020, Campbell was declared missing. Wherever he is, hopefully he found what he was looking for. Somewhere, deep in the Alaskan wilderness, the search for the Black Pyramid continues on. Notably, similar to Black Pyramid, the Alaska Triangle has sparked a lot of speculation and conspiracy theories. First named in 1972, the Alaska Triangle stretches from Anchorage in south-central Alaska to Juneau in the southeast panhandle to Utqiagvik on Alaska's northern coast. While many have a heard of the Bermuda Triangle, a patch of ocean in the Caribbean known for mysterious airplane and boating disasters, the Alaskan Triangle has managed to slip largely under the public radar, despite having a missing persons rate more than double the national average. In this remote region near Juneau, Alaska, an astonishing number of people, estimated at 20,000 since the 1970s, have vanished. With an annual average disappearance rate of around 2,250 people, this sparsely populated area has reportedly a hotbed of paranormal activity. One of the most mysterious cases that baffles investigators to this day is the disappearance of a military transport plane called the Douglas C-54, known as the Missing Douglas, which vanished in 1950. On January 26, 1950, the Missing Douglas took off from the Elmendorf Air Base in the middle of the Alaska Triangle with 44 passengers on board. There were 36 passengers and eight crew members also carrying cargo, and the C-54 is one of the most important planes in the Air Force. During this time in history, it was a year after NATO was formed and the start of the Cold War. The C-54 was headed east, 240 miles to a mandatory point. The plane made the radio call on time, and two hours into the flight, it vanished without a trace in the Alaska Triangle. There was no distress call or any indication that there was an emergency. The military base was 56 miles from the Soviet Union, and the USA initially thought they may have shot down the plane. However, the C-54 was traveling away from that region when it disappeared. After the plane did not arrive at its destination, it was declared missing, and an enormous search effort went into action, making it a top priority. 
7,000 ground troops and 85 aircraft were deployed to help in the search of the enormous area of 300,000 square miles. No one could determine why and how the missing Douglas disappeared. After the Douglas C-54 incident, four planes crashed mysteriously in the Alaska Triangle. The first plane crashed in the southern end of the Triangle and they were rescued. The second aircraft was a C-47 which crashed in the southern part of the search grid. There were no fatalities. A week later, a third search plane went down near the last position the Douglas was last seen. The fourth plane is very significant because it wasn't a search plane. It was a B-36 nuclear bomber twice as big as the Douglas. The B-36 took off from the Ielsen Air Force Base and headed to Fort Worth, Texas, non-stop on an exercise. The plane went over the Pacific before turning back into the triangle towards Juneau. The craft lost all power. The atomic bomb was cast into the ocean, and the plane crashed in Mount Cologet in British Columbia. The nuclear weapon and several thousand pounds of conventional explosives all vanished. The bomb was never found, becoming the first loss of a nuclear bomb in history. Four airplanes were lost in a 30-day period in the Alaska Triangle. Hostile Soviet Union activity was ruled out. Was it magnetic interference? Electromagnetic forces and gravitational anomaly? Was the C-54 overpowered by superior technology, causing the plane to vanish? In October 1972, a plane carrying the leader of the House of Representatives Boggs mysteriously vanished on the southern edge of the triangle. This government disappearance triggered the largest search and rescue operation up to that point in U.S. history. Still, 40 military aircraft and more than 39 search days yielded no sign of wreckage or survivors. No scrap metal, no frozen boots, nothing. Up to now, an astonishing number of people, estimated at 20,000 since the 1970s, have vanished in this vast swath of land. Considering how sparsely populated the area is, that's a shockingly high rate. For the whole of Alaska, it works out to be an average of 2,150 people disappearing every year, twice the national average, many of which appear to occur in this triangle of ultra-rugged land. So, what exactly happened? We just don't know. It remains one of the most mystifying mysteries on the planet. Was it a portal? A wormhole? Is paranormal activity happening in the Alaska Triangle? Was the C-54 abducted by a UFO? The case of the missing Douglas aircraft remains open and unsolved after 70 years. In short, no crash evidence has ever been found. The mysterious circumstances surrounding people and planes missing fueled conspiracy theories. You'd think aliens might have had some part in these strange incidents. Some people believe so. The last frontier state is not immune from UFO cases. November 17th of this year will mark the 38th anniversary of one of the best documented UFO cases ever, and it happened in the skies above Alaska. Three UFOs played tag with Japan Airlines Cargo Flight 1628 for 50 minutes while they were visually observed by a sometimes terrified flight crew. During the last 30 minutes, the UFOs were tracked on military and civilian radar, and the entire encounter was verified by a high-level administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA for short. In the own words of John Callahan, who was the Division Chief of the Accidents, Evaluations, and Investigations Division of the FAA in Washington from 1981 to 1988, I was involved with an investigation of an extraordinary event, but was asked not to talk about it. Since retiring, I decided that the public had a right to this information and that they could handle it. On November 7, 1986, a Japanese 747 cargo jet with a pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer were flying from Iceland to Anchorage just after 5 p.m. when they all saw a gigantic round object, much larger than their cargo jet, with colored lights flashing around it. Captain Kenju Tarauchi, a pilot for 29 years, also saw two smaller objects, but described the largest spaceship, as he called it, to be at least the size of an aircraft carrier because he had it on his radar which provided range marks. 
the object proceeded to fly level with the 747 until it suddenly approached very close. Following the directives of the FAA, Tarachi dropped his jet 4,000 feet and even made a 360-degree turn to avoid the objects, but they continued to follow, even appearing in front of his cockpit. Over the next half hour, the UFO could appear eight miles in front of him, and in one radar sweep ten seconds later, it could be seven miles behind him. Captain Tarachi said the technology was unthinkable because the UFOs appeared to have control over both inertia and gravity. The largest object was captured on three separate radars, between the FAA, Air Force, and in the radar screen, in the cockpit of JAL Flight 1628. Captain Tarauchi said all three objects followed his jet for 400 miles, and the FAA flight control reports confirmed that the object followed JAL Flight 1628 for at least 32 minutes. At one point, the object was seen on radar to be as close as five miles to the jet. In the following days and months, the entire crew was interviewed by FAA officials extensively, each of them providing independent descriptions and drawings of the spaceships and their extraordinary behavior. FAA investigators found the crew, whose experience totals more than 46 years, to be normal, professional, rational, and had no drug or alcohol involvement. John Callahan, who was involved in the investigation of this incident, was called to FAA headquarters to provide a briefing to scientists of President Reagan and CIA officials. In Callahan's words, after reviewing the information, including radar trackings, a CIA official told him, this event never happened, we were never here. We're confiscating all this data, and you are all sworn to secrecy. And like any sane person would, Callahan asked what the CIA officers thought it was, and he was told it was a UFO, and emphasized that if they came out and told the American public that they ran into a UFO out there, it would cause panic across the country. That's why they kept it under wraps. The CIA then confiscated all the original voice recordings and radar tapes connected to the UFO incident, but they did not know Callahan had copies of everything at his office. Callahan strongly believed Captain Tarauchi saw three UFOs, and that was the only time a UFO was recorded on radar for such an extended period. Commercial airline pilots again reported UFO sightings in Alaska's skies in January 1987, little more than two months after Captain Terauchi claimed he and his crew saw three UFOs. On January 29, 1987, the crew of Alaska Airlines Flight 53 sighted a fast-moving object on their onboard weather radar. The plane was flying at 35,000 feet and was approximately 60 miles west of McGrath on a flight from Nome to Anchorage. The crew calculated the UFO was moving at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour as it sped away from them. On January 30, 1987, a U.S. Air Force KC-135 jet traveling from Anchorage to Fairbanks sighted a huge UFO. Still, other than the recording of the conversation between the Air Force crew and Anchorage Center, little was relayed about this sighting. Over the years, individuals have reported countless other UFOs in the skies over Alaska, but none as well documented as the sighting by the crew of JAL 1628. Since 1998, there have been more than 560 UFO sightings reported in Alaska. Eyewitnesses recounted mysterious UFO sightings in the area, describing triangular objects that defied conventional aviation norms. Reports from experienced rescue workers investigating missing persons cases revealed encounters with phantom voices, confusion, and dizziness, attributed to an unknown feature of the Alaskan wilderness. On the other hand, note that as the most sparsely populated state, just 730,000 people live in Alaska, meaning just one tambin to 20th of 1% of the state is inhabited. The rest is relatively untouched wilderness, complete with ragged mountain ranges, glaciers, bitterly cold weather, millions of lakes, countless crevasses, vast valleys, and lots of bears. UFO expert Debbie Ziegelmeyer suggested that the sparsely populated nature of Alaska makes it attractive to aliens. 
Paranormal investigator Johnny Enoch speculated on secret military involvement. What a bold idea, but we can rule it out. And right in the middle of the Alaskan Triangle sits a colossal mountain named Mount Hayes. It holds dark secrets, which may be the key to finding out more about the many bizarre phenomena that take place in this area. Large Alien Base in his 1997 book, Remote Viewers, Jim Schnabel told the story of the U.S. intelligence community's involvement in the controversial issue of psychic spying that largely began in the early to mid-1970s. Commenting on the skills of a talented remote viewer in relation to matters of a UFO nature, one Pat Price, Schnabel noted Price was of the opinion that, Earl, Alaska's Mount Hayes, the jewel of a glacial range northeast of Anchorage, housed one of the aliens' largest bases. According to Pat Price, the aliens that lived deep inside Mount Hayes were very human-looking, differing only in their heart, lungs, blood, and eyes. Ominously, he added that the aliens use thought transfer for motor control of us. Price added, the site has also been responsible for strange activity and malfunction of U.S. and Soviet space objects. Rather notably, despite the controversial nature of this story, we find that the U.S. military took a great deal of interest in tales of UFO activity in Alaska in the formative years of the subject. For example, Formerly classified FBI files tell of startling UFO encounters in Alaska in the period between 1947 to 1950. It was in August 1947 that a highly impressive account of a UFO incident involving two serving members of the military was supplied to the FBI at Anchorage. The report began, this is to advise that two Army officers reported to the Office of the Director of Intelligence Headquarters Alaskan Department at Fort Richardson, Alaska, that they had witnessed an object passing through the air at a tremendous rate of speed which could not be judged as to miles per hour. According to the official report, the UFO was initially sighted by only one of the two officers, but he soon alerted his colleague to the strange sight. The object appeared to be shaped like a sphere and did not give the impression of being saucer-like or comparable to a disc. The first officer stated that it would be impossible to give minute details concerning the object, but that it appeared to be approximately two or three feet in diameter and did not leave any vapor trail in the sky. Being the experienced officer that he was, in his first attempt to gauge the altitude of the object, and from a comparison with cloud formations in the area, he determined that whatever the nature of the mystery sphere, it was cruising at a height of more than 10,000 feet. And it should be noted that to be at such a height and still be visible, in all probability, the UFO must have exceeded by a wide margin the initial size estimate of two or three feet. When questioned, the second officer gave a substantially similar account the only marked difference being that, in his opinion, he considered the object to have been approximately 10 feet in diameter and compared it to half the size of a full moon on an ordinary night. This discrepancy in size was apparently due to the fact that the second officer believed the UFO was more likely to have been at a height of three to 4,000 feet rather than at an altitude of 10,000 feet as had been suggested by his colleague. The difference of opinion over the altitude and size of the object may or may not have been significant. The important factor, however, was that both officers agreed that some type of anomalous object had most definitely been seen. And as the report concluded, the second officer pointed out that one of the remarkable features of this report was that it was definitely traveling against the wind. Shortly afterward, the FBI office at Anchorage reported to Bureau Director J. Edgar Hoover that We have been able to locate a flyer who observed some flying object near Bethel, Alaska in July 1947. The report to Hoover continued, 
The pilot related that the occasion of seeing the flying object near Bethel was on a July day when the sky was completely clear of clouds and it being during the early part, it is daylight the entire night. The time of his sighting of this flying object was about 10 p.m. and the sun had just dropped beyond the horizon. Flying weather was extremely good and he was coming into the Bethel airport with a DC-3. On approaching the airport, the pilot was amazed to see to his left an unidentified craft the size of a C-54 without any fuselage, which seemed to resemble a flying wing. As a result of its unique shape, the pilot was initially unable to determine whether the object was heading towards his aircraft or away from it, and elected to make a 45-degree turn in an attempt to defuse any possible chance of collision. The FBI noted that the pilot was certain that the craft was free of any external power source, such as a propeller-driven engine, and exhibited no exhaust as it flew by. The document added, He called on his radio to the Civil Aeronautics Administration station at Bethel, asking what aircraft was in the vicinity, and they had no reports of any aircraft. The object he sighted was some five or ten miles from the airport before his arrival, and he stated that the path did not go directly across the airport. He, of course, could not tell whether the object was making any noise, and stated that it was flying at a thousand-foot altitude and estimated travel at 300 miles per hour. It was traveling in the direction from Bethel to Nome, which is in a northwesterly direction. He noted no radio interference, and is unable to describe the color other than it appeared dark, but of definite shape and did not blend into the sky, but had a definite, concise outline. He clearly observed the object at this time. As the 1940s drew to a close and a new decade dawned, the FBI continued to receive and log high-quality UFO reports on a regular basis. Of those, one of the more credible related to a noteworthy series of encounters that occurred in Alaskan airspace over the course of two days in early 1950. Forwarded to the FBI by an official U.S. Navy source, the confidential three-page intelligence report paints a startling picture of multiple UFO encounters involving the military. Titled, Unidentified Phenomena in Vicinity of Kodiak, Alaska, it concerns a report of sightings of unidentified airborne objects by various naval personnel on 22 and 23 January 1950. The author of the report noted, at 222240W January Latint Smith, USN, Patrol Plane Commander of P2V3 No. 4 of Patrol Squadron 1, reported an unidentified radar contact 20 miles north of the Naval Air Station, Kodiak, Alaska. When this contact was first made, Latine Smith was flying the Kodiak Security Patrol. At 0243W, eight minutes later, a radar contact was made on an object 10 miles southeast of NAS Kodiak. Latine Smith checked with the control tower to determine known traffic in the area and was informed that there was none. During this period, the radar operator, Gasky, ALC, USN, reported intermittent radar interference of a type never before experienced. Contact was lost at this time, but intermittent interference continued. Smith and Gasky were not the only two to report that unidentified vehicles had intruded into Alaskan airspace. At the time of these encounters, the USS Tilbrook was anchored in the vicinity of Buoy 19 in the nearby main ship channel. On board, the Tilbrook was a seaman named Morgan, first name unknown, who was standing watch. At some point between 2 E and 3 Zwar AM, Morgan reported that a very fast moving red light which appeared to be of exhaust nature seemed to come from the southeast, moved clockwise in a large circle in the direction of and around Kodiak, and returned out in a generally southeast direction. Perhaps not quite believing what he was seeing, Morgan alerted one of his shipmates, Carver, to the strange spectacle and both watched as the UFO made a return flight. According to the testimony of Morgan and Carver, the object was in sight for an estimated 30 seconds, 
No odor or sound was detected, and the object was described to have the appearance of a ball of fire about one foot in diameter. The report then records yet another encounter with the mystery visitor at 22N044-4DW, conducting routine. Kodiak Security Patrol, Leet Smith, reported a visual sighting of an unidentified airborne object at a range of five miles on the starboard bow. This object showed indications of great speed on the radar scope. The trailing edge of the blip gave a tail-like indication. Lieutenant Smith quickly advised the rest of the crew of the PV-23 No. 24 that the UFO was in sight, and all watched fascinated as the strange vehicle soared overhead at a speed estimated to have been around 1-1-800 miles per hour. Smith climbed to intercept the UFO and vainly tried to circle it. Needless to say, its high speed and remarkable maneuverability ensured that Smith's actions were futile. However, neither Lieutenant Smith nor his crew was quite prepared for what happened next. Subsequently, the object seemed to be opening the range, the official report reads, and Smith attempted to close the range. The UFO was observed to open out somewhat, then to turn to the left and come up on Smith's quarter. Smith considered this to be a highly threatening gesture and turned out all lights in the aircraft. Four minutes later, the object disappeared from view in a southeasterly direction. At 0435 hours on the following day, Lieutenants Barco and Causer of Patrol Squadron 1 were conducting the Kodiak Security Patrol when they too sighted an unidentified aerial vehicle. At the time of their encounter, the aircraft in which the officers were flying was approximately 62 miles south of Kodiak. For 10 minutes, Barco and Causer, along with the pilot, Captain Paulson, watched stunned as the mysterious object twisted and turned in the Alaskan sky. An assessment of these reports read thus, 1. To Lati Smith and crew, it appeared as two orange lights rotating about a common center, like two jet aircraft making slow rolls in tight formation. It had a wide speed range. 2. To Morgan and Carver, it appeared as a reddish-orange ball of fire about one foot in diameter, traveling at a high rate of speed. 3. To Causer, Barco and Paulson, it appeared to be a pulsating orange-yellow projectile-shaped flame, with regular periods of pulsation on three to five seconds. Later, as the object increased the range, the pulsations appeared to increase to on seven or eight seconds, and off seven to eight seconds. The final comment on the encounters reads, In view of the fact that no weather balloons were known to have been released within a reasonable time before the sightings, it appears that the object or objects were not balloons. If not balloons, the objects must be regarded as phenomena, possibly meteorites, the exact nature of which could not be determined by this office. The meteorite theory for this series of encounters is particularly puzzling. It goes without saying that meteorites do not stay in sight for an estimated 30 seconds. Meteorites do. Not close in on military aircraft in what is deemed to be a highly threatening gesture, and they do not appear as two orange lights rotating about a common center. In other words, it seems safe to conclude that genuinely anomalous phenomena were indeed witnessed by experienced military personnel at Kodiak, Alaska in January 1950. Does any of this prove that there really is an alien base deep within Alaska's Mount Hayes, as Pat Price suggested? No, of course not. But in view of all the above, perhaps it's time someone took a closer look at Price's claims. You know, just in case. Hundreds of people have wandered into the Alaska wilderness and were never seen again. Some of these individuals come to Alaska unprepared for the harsh climate, rugged landscape, and wild animals. But even experienced outdoors men, mountain climbers, and boaters disappear here. Richard Lyman Griffiths from Spokane, Washington, invented a wilderness survival cocoon, and in the summer of 2006, he headed into the wilderness of southeast Alaska to test his invention. No one reported him missing for a year. When authorities began searching for him, 
they learned a bus dropped off Griffiths along the Alaska Highway. He stopped at a lodge near the White River, where he left some of his gear and told people he planned to hike up river to McCarthy, a small town in the Wrangell St. Elias National Park. He was never seen again. Since Griffiths told friends he might spend the winter in Alaska, no one worried about him for several months. But finally, a friend called the Canadian Mounties and reported him missing. His friend had no idea where Griffiths was planning to go to test his wilderness cocoon. No trace has ever been found of Griffiths or his bright orange cocoon. Mountain climbing is a dangerous pursuit. In addition to Mitt Denali, the highest peak in North America, Alaska boasts many of the most challenging mountains and glaciers any daring alpinist could hope to conquer. Mountain climbers die every year in Alaska, but most climbers ascend in groups. If one or two members of the group tragically fall into a crevasse, their companions can tell the story about what happened to them. When a solo climber makes a fatal mistake, no one is there to record the details, and experts can only guess what happened. In 1984, Naomi Uemura, a famous Japanese adventurer and mountain climber, attempted a solo winter ascent of Denali. Uemura had already successfully summited Denali on his own, but he wanted to try a more challenging climb in the winter. He made it to the top on February 13, 1984, but something happened on his descent, and he never returned to base camp. Conditions near the top of Denali when Uemura disappeared included high winds and a temperature of minus 46 degrees Celsius. Such brutal conditions leave little room for human error. More recently, on March 7, 2018, two experienced climbers, Ryan Johnson and Mark andre Leclerc, failed to return from a climb on a seven-peaked mountain near Juneau. However, in this instance, searchers found a clue hinting at the fate of the two men. They found an intact anchor rope at the top of an ice chute on one peak and then saw two climbing ropes in a crevasse, midway down the same peak. A spokesperson for the Alaska State Troopers said the evidence showed the climbers made it to the top and set an anchor. Then, she said, they were either taken out by an avalanche, a rope failed, or something else catastrophic occurred. As you see, there's no question more people, planes, and boats disappear in Alaska than anywhere else in the United States. Is something strange happening here? Or is this just a dangerous place with huge mountains, treacherous glaciers, roaring rivers, and violent storms? We just don't know. But the allure of the unknown itself continues to captivate the imagination of many, leading to ongoing speculation and fascination with the mysteries of the Alaska Triangle. In addition, with huge amounts of forests and uncharted wilderness, Alaska is certainly a perfect location for Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, to hide out. There are numerous reports of Bigfoot sightings throughout the entire state. Some reports include evidence of nesting sites, a possible Bigfoot skeleton, and unidentified hair samples. Some witnesses have even reported seeing a swimming Sasquatch during their encounters, some villages have even relocated as a result of terrifying encounters with Bigfoot, which is surprising because the common understanding is that the creature prefers isolated areas and is in general quite peaceful. Peterson. There were stories told from 1900 to 1925 about a trapper that went into the woods and disappeared shortly after reporting exceptionally large tracks in the snow. The strangest story ever told by Virginia Culp, documents this incredibly eerie encounter in further detail. Ruby. In 1943, it was reported that a man was attacked by an unknown creature in the wilderness about 18 miles down the Yukon from the town of Ruby. He later died of internal injuries, and the creature that attacked him, presumably Bigfoot, was said to be run off by his dog team. Bristol Bay. In 1940, near the town of Kaluka, a group of ladies was berry-picking when they reportedly came upon a large man-like creature with long hair running down his back. They later went on to capture this creature, cage it, and feed it. It later died and the story was documented in a letter from the cage keeper. Ketchikan. This southeast town holds some pretty wild tales of the past. In 1956, about 50 miles southwest of Ketchikan, a man that was out fishing reported seeing an eight-foot-tall creature that was around 400 pounds and walked on two feet like an ape. 
There was also a young boy that reported a similar sighting nearby in 1960 and reacted to the encounter by screaming and running off as fast as possible. Port Chatham, also known as Portlock, this eerie small village on the Kenai Peninsula was home to so many Bigfoot sightings that the entire population eventually fled due to an overwhelming amount of fear. For a period of time during the 1900s, torn up bodies were washing up on the shores of this small village, making the people believe that it had to be the evil Sasquatch spirits that roamed the woods nearby. Wrangell, Multiple Bigfoot sightings occurred in this area during the early 1900s. One includes a man that was berry picking in the woods and was awakened by the sounds of a massive man-like creature having a conversation nearby. Another story in this area is about a tall Bigfoot creature that actually ended up carrying a three-year-old back to her home after she wandered off into the woods without anyone noticing her. If Bigfoot is as confrontational as people in Alaska claim it to be, it's a possibility that this creature is perhaps the reason why some people go missing, especially in the wilderness if they come face to face with it. What's notable, despite its reputation, Alaska is still a popular tourist destination. With its majestic glaciers, rugged landscapes, and abundant wildlife, the last frontier has long been revered as the epitome of raw, untouched wilderness captivating the hearts of travelers from around the globe and drawing them in with promises of unparalleled natural beauty and unforgettable experiences. The allure of Alaska begins with its breathtaking scenery, which serves as a playground for outdoor enthusiasts and nature lovers alike. From the towering peaks of the Alaska Range to the pristine waters of the Inside Passage, the state's diverse landscapes offer endless opportunities for exploration and adventure. Visitors can embark on scenic drives along the iconic Alaska Highway, venture into the untamed wilderness of Denali National Park, or cruise through the icy waters of Glacier Bay National Park, marveling at calving glaciers and breaching whales along the way. But Alaska is more than just a haven for outdoor recreation. It's also a place steeped in history and culture shaped by centuries of indigenous traditions and pioneering spirit. Native Alaskan communities, such as the Tlingit, Haida, and Inupiat, have inhabited the region for thousands of years, preserving their rich heritage through art, storytelling, and traditional practices. Visitors can immerse themselves in this living history by attending cultural festivals, visiting native villages, and learning about the ancient traditions that continue to thrive in modern-day Alaska. In addition to its natural beauty and cultural heritage, Alaska offers a host of unique experiences that set it apart from other destinations. For thrill-seekers, there are opportunities to go heli-skiing on remote mountain peaks, dog-sledding across vast expanses of snow, or even mushing their own team of sled dogs through the wilderness. Meanwhile, foodies can indulge in fresh seafood straight from the icy waters, feast on wild game harvested from the land, or sample traditional dishes like salmon jerky and reindeer sausage at local eateries and markets. One of the most iconic experiences in Alaska is witnessing the mesmerizing display of the northern lights, a natural phenomenon that draws visitors from around the world to the state's northern reaches. From late fall to early spring, the night skies come alive with vibrant hues of green, purple, and pink as solar particles collide with the Earth's atmosphere, creating an otherworldly spectacle that is both awe-inspiring and humbling. Whether viewed from the comfort of a cozy lodge or out in the wilderness under a blanket of stars, the northern lights are sure to leave a lasting impression on all who behold them. Despite its remote location and challenging climate, Alaska has seen a steady increase in tourism in recent years, with visitors flocking to the state in search of adventure, solitude, and connection with the natural world. Cruise ship arrivals have surged, bringing thousands of passengers to coastal communities like Juneau, Ketchikan, and Skagway each summer while road trippers and outdoor enthusiasts explore the state's vast interior by car, RV, and train. 
the rise of ecotourism and sustainable travel has also contributed to Alaska's appeal, as more travelers seek authentic experiences that support local communities and minimize their environmental impact. Of course, Alaska's popularity as a tourist destination has not been without its challenges. The state faces ongoing issues related to over-tourism, infrastructure development, and environmental conservation, as well as the economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and fluctuations in global travel trends. Balancing the demands of tourism with the need to preserve Alaska's natural and cultural heritage is an ongoing struggle, requiring careful planning, collaboration, and stewardship from all stakeholders involved. Nevertheless, Alaska remains a beacon of adventure and discovery for travelers seeking to escape the ordinary and embrace the extraordinary. Its vast wilderness, rich history, and untamed beauty continue to inspire awe and wonder in all who venture northward, reminding us of the power and resilience of the natural world. Whether exploring the rugged coastline, hiking through alpine meadows, or gazing in wonder at the dancing lights of the Aurora Borealis, visitors to Alaska are sure to find themselves forever changed by the experience, drawn back time and time again to the last frontier of the American West. And while Alaska remains a beacon of adventure and discovery for travelers seeking to escape the ordinary and embrace the extraordinary, it also serves as a unique and invaluable setting for scientific research across various disciplines. Owing to its diverse ecosystems, extreme climate conditions, and relative isolation. From studying climate change and wildlife biology to geology and astronomy, researchers flock to Alaska to explore some of the most pressing questions facing our planet. Let's delve into a few key areas of scientific research in Alaska. 1. Climate change. Alaska is experiencing climate change at an accelerated rate compared to the rest of the world, making it a hotspot for climate research. Scientists are studying the retreat of glaciers, thawing permafrost, and shifting ecosystems to understand the impacts of global warming. One notable project is the Alaska Climate Research Center, which monitors temperature trends, precipitation patterns, and sea ice extent to provide vital data for climate models. Researchers also investigate the feedback loops exacerbating climate change. For instance, as permafrost thaws, it releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere, further warming the planet. By quantifying these feedback mechanisms, scientists aim to refine climate models and inform policymakers about the urgency of mitigating climate change. 2. Wildlife Biology Alaska's vast and diverse wildlife populations provide ample opportunities for research on animal behavior, ecology, and conservation. Scientists study iconic species like grizzly bears, wolves, and caribou to understand their habitat requirements, migration patterns, and responses to environmental change. Additionally, research on marine mammals, such as whales and seals, contributes to our understanding of marine ecosystems and the effects of human activities like shipping and oil exploration. 3. Geology and Geophysics Alaska's dynamic geological landscape offers a window into Earth's history and processes. Thus, its dynamic geology offers insights into plate tectonics, earthquakes, and volcanic activity. Researchers study the subduction zone where the Pacific Plate meets the North American Plate, leading to frequent seismic events. Alaska is also home to over 100 volcanoes, making it an ideal laboratory for studying volcanic processes and hazards. Understanding these geological phenomena is crucial for hazard mitigation and disaster preparedness. One prominent research focus is the Alaska Earthquake Center, which operates a network of seismometers to detect and analyze seismic events. By studying earthquake patterns and fault dynamics, scientists can assess the likelihood of future earthquakes and develop early warning systems to protect lives and infrastructure. 4. Oceanography and Marine Biology 
Alaska's extensive coastline and rich marine ecosystems support thriving fisheries and diverse marine life. Scientists study ocean currents, nutrient cycling, and marine biodiversity to better understand ecosystem dynamics and inform sustainable management practices. Research on topics like ocean acidification, harmful algal blooms, and marine pollution helps safeguard Alaska's valuable marine resources. Last year, scientists has made a stunning discovery in this area. A mysterious golden orb that may be an egg laid by an unknown sea creature has been discovered on the ocean floor off the Pacific coast of Alaska. The smooth object with an intriguing hole at the center was found at a depth of about two miles by a remote-controlled submarine explorer. Scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, in the U.S., which made the discovery, suggest it could be a hatched egg or a marine sponge. Researchers are conducting tests and a DNA analysis to work out what the shiny object, which feels like skin tissue, according to NOAA, is. A remotely operated arm was deployed to tickle the egg, which was found to have a delicate skin-like texture. It was then gently suctioned up a tube for testing in a lab. The dive is part of the Seascape Alaska 5 expedition. The mission is exploring the Gulf of Alaska down to depths of four miles, including deep sea coral and sponge habitats and geological features such as mud volcanoes. Speaking over the live stream on 30 the August, when the discovery was made, team members offered theories about the identity of the object, including an egg casing or a sponge. They suggested that the hole was created by a creature hatching or by a predator breaking in. I just hope when we poke it, something doesn't decide to come out. It's like the beginning of a horror movie, one scientist said. 5. Astronomy and Space Science Alaska, with its vast landscapes and minimal light pollution, serves as an ideal haven for research in astronomy and space science. Anchorage, Fairbanks, and more remote areas like the Denali National Park offer prime locations for astronomical observations and research. The University of Alaska Fairbanks, or UAF, stands at the forefront of such endeavors, boasting state-of-the-art facilities like the Poker Flat Research Range, one of the world's most active rocket launch sites. Here, scientists conduct experiments to study phenomena ranging from the auroras to the Earth's upper atmosphere. Moreover, the Geophysical Institute at UAF hosts the Alaska Satellite Facility, which collaborates with NASA to receive and distribute satellite data worldwide, aiding in various space-related research endeavors. Alaska's unique geographical position also makes it an essential ground for observing celestial events such as solar and lunar eclipses, offering unparalleled opportunities for astronomical research. Additionally, the Arctic region's relevance in climate studies aligns with space science, as researchers investigate the intricate relationship between space weather and terrestrial climate. Alaska's commitment to space science extends beyond academia, with organizations like the Alaska Aerospace Corporation promoting commercial space ventures and satellite launches from the Kodiak Launch Complex. In essence, Alaska's expansive wilderness and strategic positioning make it an invaluable asset to the global pursuit of understanding the cosmos, fostering groundbreaking research in astronomy and space science. 6. Indigenous Knowledge and Traditional Ecological Knowledge, or TEK. Incorporating indigenous perspectives and tech is increasingly recognized as essential in scientific research in Alaska. Collaborative projects between scientists and indigenous communities aim to merge traditional knowledge with modern scientific methods to address environmental challenges and promote cultural resilience. Overall, Alaska's vast and rugged landscapes provide an unparalleled natural laboratory for scientific inquiry. By studying the complexities of this dynamic environment, researchers contribute to our understanding of fundamental scientific processes and inform strategies for sustainable resource management and conservation. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, 
and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.